In a right triangle, the cosecant of angle theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse to the opposite side. This is the abbreviation we use, and we say that cosecant of theta is the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. Also, the cosecant function is the reciprocal of the sine function, and we write that cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta. And that is because in a right triangle, sine of angle theta is the opposite side divided by hypotenuse, while the cosecant is the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. Now, if we look at the unit circle, the values of sine are represented by the y-coordinates of these points on the unit circle. And we write that sine of any angle theta on the unit circle is equal to y. For example, sine of pi over 6 equals 1 half. And this is because this circle has the radius 1, and if from this point we draw a perpendicular down, we will form a right triangle. Then, in this triangle, the angle is pi over 6, the opposite side is 1 half, and the hypotenuse is 1. Then, 1 half divided by 1 is still 1 half. Now, let's talk about the cosecant function. Because the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, we can write that the cosecant of angle theta is 1 over y. So, to find the cosecant of any angle on the unit circle, we will divide 1 by the y-coordinates of these points. Let's find a few values of the cosecant function using this formula and the unit circle. We will start with cosecant of 0. So we need 1 divided by y, and at 0 the y-coordinate is also 0. Then we will have 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. So, right from the first example, we see that the cosecant function is not always defined for all the angles. Now, let's continue with cosecant of pi over 6. To find the value at this angle, we will divide 1 by 1 half. And 1 divided by 1 half is the same as 1 times 2 over 1, which makes 2. Cosecant of pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2 over 2. As you see, at pi over 4, the value of y is square root of 2 over 2. This is equal to square root of 2, which is approximately 1.4. Let's continue with the angles pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. Cosecant of pi over 2 equals 1 over 1 which makes 1. Cosecant of pi is 1 over 0, and this is again undefined. And cosecant of 3 pi over 2 is 1 over negative 1, which makes negative 1. So here again we divided 1 by negative 1. Notice that if at 0, and at pi the cosecant is undefined, then at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2 the value of the cosecant is the same as the value of sine. We know that sine of theta is represented by the y-coordinates of these points on the unit circle. At pi over 2 sine is 1, and at 3 pi over 2 sine is negative 1. And here the cosecant has exactly the same values at these angles. Now let's talk about the function y equals cosecant of x. In this function, x is the independent variable and it represents the angles in radians, and y is the dependent variable and it represents the value of the cosecant. To graph it, we will start the rectangular coordinate system and we will plot the angles in radians along the x-axis. So, to the right of the origin, we have pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and so on. And to the left, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 2 pi, and so on. At the points where the function is undefined, the graph will have vertical asymptotes. 
If we consider the points that we have here, then the function will have vertical asymptotes at negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on. Closer to these asymptotes, the function will approach either positive infinity or negative infinity. Now, one technique for graphing the cosecant function is to use the sine graph as a guide. For this, we will start by graphing the sine function first, and the sine function passes through the origin, and let's make this graph all dotted. We made it dotted because our goal here is to graph the cosecant function. Now, notice that at all the points where the sine function crosses the x-axis, the cosecant function will have vertical asymptotes. So now let's draw the vertical asymptotes. I made them dotted because they are still not part of the graph of the cosecant function. And now, as we talked before, there are angles like these two where the value of the cosecant and sine are the same. On the graph, these are the maximum values of sine and the minimum values. Again, these are the points where the sine and the cosecant function come into contact. Now, let's see the graph between these two consecutive asymptotes. At pi over 2, the value of cosecant is 1, and as we move to the right and to the left, the function approaches positive infinity. Here is the graph, and as you see, it has this U-shape. The same shape we will have between these two asymptotes and to the right of this one. Now, down here between these two asymptotes, the function will approach negative infinity. Then the same pattern will continue to the right and to the left indefinitely. So, this is the graph of the function y equals cosecant of x. Now, let's see a few properties of this function. The period of this function is 2 pi, just like the period of the sine function. So, if we look at the interval from 0 to pi, then we see that one part of the graph approaches positive infinity, and the other part approaches negative infinity. These two will keep repeating to the right and to the left indefinitely. The domain is all real numbers except multiples of pi. At multiples of pi, we have vertical asymptotes. The range includes all the values from negative infinity to negative 1, and then all the values from positive 1 to positive infinity. So, in the middle, we have the sine function, and above and below, we have the cosecant function. So, here we have the graph, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.